Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I have the great pleasure of introducing you to the brand new cotton candy ink from the Catherine Pooler line. These are some of my favorite inks and I think that this color is a great addition to the collection. I'm also going to be using some brand new stamps and dies, including this at the fair stamp set, which includes that adorable Ferris wheel, the fair word die, which includes a shadow, and then the admit to stamp set and coordinating die set. All of these are so much fun and perfect for introducing this new pink ink to the line. So I have a color palette pulled here and I actually end up changing this out a little bit. I started out with cotton candy, party dress, some lemongrass, all that jazz and orange peel. And I later kind of changed this to a more muted version of the same color palette. But I'm going to start by stamping this adorable Ferris wheel onto some white cardstock. I'm going to heat emboss this using some silver embossing powder. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount that stamp in my Misty stamping tool, prep the surface with a powder tool, and then I'm going to ink up my stamp using Versamark ink. This is my favorite ink for embossing. And I'll stamp that directly onto my smooth white cardstock. Now, when I originally saw this stamp set, I thought it would be really fun to make the wheel of the Ferris wheel turn. But when I realized that that would make the little cars go upside down, <laughs> I decided I didn't want a death Ferris wheel. So I'm going to add some dimension in a different way. So once I have that stamped onto my cardstock, I'm adding some Brutus Monroe Sterling embossing powder and I'm gonna heat set that with my heat tool. And then I am going to stamp this Ferris wheel again, but I'm gonna do some partial inking and stamping here. I'm cleaning off my stamp because really I only want the center base portion of this second Ferris wheel because I'm gonna pop it up and give this Ferris wheel a little bit of dimension. So I've kind of inked the center of the stamp and then stamped it onto my cardstock. I'm adding my sterling embossing powder again and you're gonna see that I have a bunch of extra lines and a little Ferris wheel car or booth or I don't know, trolley. <laughs> I think that's a fun word for it. Um, and I don't need those and I don't want the extra lines when I go to fussy cut this out. So I am just taking a dry, clean paintbrush and wiping away the embossing powder from the areas that I don't need. And then I am going to heat set that with my embossing gun. So you can see that I have just the base there. Now I'm starting out with the cotton candy ink and there are 10 cars or 10 trolleys on this little Ferris wheel. So I'm gonna stamp the first one with cotton candy ink. You can see it's an adorable pink that is in the same family on the Catherine Pooler color wheel as the party dress. Party dress is definitely a more saturated pink and I'm stamping the next little trolley on this Ferris wheel in that party dress. And I'm kind of using a rainbow, not a true rainbow, but a rainbow idea here. Now I've stamped all of these and this is where I'm going to ruin everything because as I'm blotting the ink off of my embossing powder, I actually transferred ink to other areas of the Ferris wheel. And that's okay because I ended up wanting to kind of take this color palette and mute it back a little bit. So this time I'm going to restamp my Ferris wheel and I'm using cotton candy, party dress, Bellini, shea butter. And when I get to all that jazz, I thought I would use that, but it was feeling like it needed to be knocked back in saturation or depth a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my cell phone. I'm signed up for the Catherine Pooler update. So I got an email with the new color wheel download, including the new cotton candy ink. And I'm just gonna pull that up. You can see me searching through my email. I'm gonna just click on that. I can download it and I can print it, but for now I'm just gonna access it on my phone. You can see my internet is nice and slow. <laughs> And I'm gonna pull up the section that has all that jazz, and I'm going to pick an ink that is less saturated or not quite as dark, and that ended up being Cumberbun. So this is a very similar color palette to the original color palette that I use, but I've switched out the orange, yellow, and blue instead. 
So now I am going to try to avoid transferring ink again. So I'm just going to blot that with a piece of scrap paper. And then I'm gonna line up the coordinating die and I'm gonna run this through my Anna Griffin Impress machine to die cut this Ferris wheel out. Now, here is where I messed up. <laughs> I had ink on this still. So there was still some ink sitting on top of the embossing powder. I didn't get it all off because I was trying to be careful not to smear it on my Ferris wheel again. But that ink ended up transferring to my die cutting plate here and getting ink in onto my background later on. So how would I avoid this in the future? I would use a piece of scrap paper over the top of that Ferris wheel to kind of prevent the transfer of ink to the cutting plates. And you can see I wiped down my cutting plates, but I didn't do a very good job because I still got ink transfer later on. Now I use the coordinating die to also die cut this section where I'm just using the base. So it got some of those legs kind of cut out for me. And then I'm just finishing the cut with my scissors and I'll set that to the side and I'm going to create a background. Now for this background, I'm using the Twisted Sunburst stencil from the Catherine Pooler collection. And I started out with the minted color from Catherine Pooler, and I didn't end up loving that. And so I went to Hot Tub instead, which is another one of my favorite colors from Catherine Pooler Inc. If I had to go with a blue that is my favorite blue, I would, I would say that this is probably it when it comes to ink. So you can see I've held my stencil in place with a little bit of the Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape, and I am just using a blending brush to blend on some of that hot tub ink onto some white cardstock. I'm gonna remove the stencil and wipe it down so that it's ready to use for my next card. And I really wanted to add some color into the center of the Ferris wheel too so that it wasn't stark white on top of this blue kind of sky background that I'm creating. So I'm taking a mini ink blending brush and just blending on some of that hot tub ink into the center of the Ferris wheel. I didn't do the entire thing because I didn't wanna go over those colored trolleys that I have, but I did add quite a bit in the center. Now, as I was looking at this background, I really felt like it needed to be warmed up a little bit. So there was like kind of that warm, sunshiny glow happening in this background that's kind of going to be my sky so i'm taking some of that shea butter ink and just blending lightly over the top yes the hot tub ink is there but you can see it warmed it up really beautifully and now it's time to start kind of assembling my card so i have this base that i've die cut I'm adding that on top of the Ferris wheel with all the colorful stamping using some foam adhesive. So it's giving it a little bit of dimension. And then I am going to add some Stickles glitter glue. This is Stardust Stickles over my background. This is kind of a rando technique <laughs> that I decided to do at the last minute. I wanted some sparkle on this card and I thought this was a fun way to bring it in. So I am going and just adding a line of Stickles kind of in a circle and I'm doing something that gives me the absolute heebie-jeebies because <laughs> I'm getting stuff on my fingers and I don't like stuff on my fingers but I was kind of working in a hurried fashion so I just spread it out with my finger and added that glitter to the background. I added a sentiment strip there on the bottom and then I'm gonna add this Ferris wheel to my card front using some foam adhesive. And I did wanna say, by the way, earlier when I reached up, you may have seen a bruise on my arm. I don't actually know where that very nasty bruise came from. I tend to run into things. I'm a redhead, we bruise easily. <laughs> so I just wanted to address that in case you saw it. It is on my upper arm and it has been there for like a week and a half and it is still not gone. And it hurt like crazy. So I don't even know when I did it, but it's there. So I'm finishing this card off now by adding some Crater Lake sequins to the card front. And then I mounted it on a panel of sea glass ink from Concord and Ninth. Now I was looking at this and I loved it, but I felt like it was too much white. And so I'm gonna take that cotton candy ink and swipe it directly on some smooth white cardstock. And I'm gonna re-stamp that happy birthday greeting onto that colored cardstock that I created with my cotton candy ink. This gives you a really good feel 
for the color of this pink. It is a great true pink is what I would call it. It's not really a warm pink, like a corally pink or a blushy pink, but it is a nice true pink. And then I trim that down and I'm gonna slide this right over the top of the sentiment that I already have on the card. And then we're gonna add some tickets to this and call it done. So here's a look at the final card. Those little tickets are from the Admit To stamp set, which I am using on the second card project. So you'll get an up close and personal look for that. Now I loved this Twisted Sunburst stencil so much that I decided to use it on my second card as well. And I am going to create a background this time using the cotton candy ink. So I'm just holding my stencil in place with that tape, ink blending over the stencil using some cotton candy ink. And then I am going to take the stencil and I'm going to release it from the paper and I'm going to twist it slightly and I'm going to add a second layer of ink, but this time I'm gonna use the Bellini ink. So I'm just creating this really fun background which is going to serve as the base for the stamped images that I'm going to add on top. So you can see I've just twisted it slightly. I'm using a light layer of the Bellini ink. This is just gonna give it a really fun sunset feel this stencil, I'm telling you, it's not new, but I am totally loving it and I think I'm gonna use it a lot. So it's a great find in the Catherine Pooler collection that I wasn't necessarily aware of before, but I'm in love with it. So once I blended on that Bellini ink, you can see I have this beautiful background and now I can start working on some stamped images. So I'm going to stamp the outline of these images using a black ink. So I'm using the popcorn and the cotton candy and then also the little ticket. And then it has these little filler images to add your color. And I love stamp sets like this because they're so easy to use. I'm starting out by filling in the cotton candy with, you guessed it, cotton candy ink. And then I'm gonna do a little rock and roll technique. Now, quite honestly, I wish I hadn't have gone as heavy on this party dress ink as I did. So I've rolled it on my ink pad and then I am softening the edge with a blending brush. But what happened was I actually spread that ink more into the center than I wanted. And so this cotton candy got a little bit darker. It's still cute and that gave it some shading. But if I could go back, I would keep it a little more on the light side. For the popcorn bucket, I'm stamping the stripes in the cummerbund ink, and then I'm stamping the popcorn piece in shea butter and the base of the cotton candy using the hot tub ink. Then I'm going to take all of these, I'm gonna line up the coordinating dies and die cut them. I also stamped that little ticket there and I stamped the inside of the ticket using the cotton candy ink. And now I have all of these little stamped images, so much fun, ready to go on my card front. I've trimmed down that panel that I did my ink blending on earlier, and now I'm stamping the Treat Yourself Today sentiment from the Admit To stamp set directly onto that card front in some black ink. And then I'm going to add these stamped and die cut images using some foam adhesive. I'm just kind of layering them over the top. And then I'm gonna finish these little stamped images off with a little bit of Stickles glitter glue. Now I'm gonna tell you, I probably should have done this a little bit later on in the card making process <laughs> because I didn't want to wait for these to dry. So I had to be very careful with the assembly of this card because I had wet glitter glue. And yes, I added the glitter to the popcorn as well, but you can see I finished this card off by layering that onto some sea glass cardstock and onto a top folding A2 size white card base. I added some more of those Crater Lake sequins and that finishes off my second card featuring this at the fair collection from Katherine Pooler and the brand new cotton candy ink color, which is just rounding out the pinks in the Katherine Pooler line so beautifully. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. Or you can head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Over there, I'll have more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. And be sure to join me over on Instagram today. There is an Instagram hop celebrating this new release, and there will be prizes. <laughs>
As always, I want to thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I am so glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of my paper crafting and card making video tutorials here. And don't forget to leave me a comment below and let me know which of these two cards is your favorite. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.